the CEO of an organization called AMEC, which is the Afro Middle East Center. The gentleman's name in the Joburg studio is Samir Brico, the chief executive of uh, AMEC. Samir, thanks very much for joining us on Power Lunch uh, today. It's an interesting situation there between the two regions, between, for example, South Africa and the Middle East. We are both, of course, resource rich, but there's very different approaches to the extraction of resources. Oil and gas and clean energy, of course, are very much in focus in the Middle East. In South Africa, it's bulk commodities and precious metals. The organization that you represent, uh, do you learn from each other, the two regions, that is? Well, thank you very much, uh, Linda, having me on the program. Uh, first, AMEC actually it doesn't stand for Africa and Middle East, but we do do a lot uh, of work both in Africa and, and, and Middle East. Uh, the markets which we are working on is yeah. the oil and gas industry, the mining industry, clean power technologies, environment and infrastructure. There's a question about what is the learning here between Middle East and Africa. On the energy side, definitely quite a lot of changes are taking place. If we think about oil, our view that the oil prices in 2013 and maybe even 2014 will be actually going down. Uh, the reasons for that, because we see, for instance, uh, the growth in the OECD countries and the growth in China is not there as it usually to be, uh, used to be. Uh, we see also that a lot of projects are coming actually online, which is putting a lot of pressure on the systems. Uh, historical trends shows that it will be going down. And more important is uh, gas uh, discoveries in the U.S. with the shale gas exploration and also with the oil exploration in the U.S. is definitely going to change the dynamics of the energy uh, uh, situation. The learning which we are taking now from the Middle East also is that Many of the jobs, if you are doing, for instance, a mining job, it needs to be connected with infrastructure and it needs to be connected with energy. And that's what we're seeing also here in Africa. So energy and commodities when it comes to mining and infrastructure are coming closer to each other than ever before. Uh, Samir, what about the situation um, when it comes to the supply-demand balance, for example, in the oil market? I noticed data coming out this week shows that oil supplies are at a seven-month high, and that's one of the reasons why the oil price, uh, the Brent crude oil price has come down from close to $119 a barrel to its current level of $113.25. Is that all to do with uh, release of stocks in the United States and technicalities, or is it also to do with uh, regions like Africa actually sort of starting to fulfill their potential. I mean, we used to think of just Nigeria and then Angola, but we've also got Sudan and other countries as well uh, coming to the fore. Well, you're completely right, Lindsay. I mean, there are a lot of things that are taking place here in Africa, and, and, and what I call it is, is very interesting news for Africa indeed. Uh, if we see the explorations taking place uh, in Angola, in Ghana and also now coming up in Eastern Africa, this would represent a very solid base to the supply of this world. Just to give you a feeling about what we are talking about, uh, the U.S., they have their own exploration on, an, on oil and do they also do import about 7 million barrels a day, of which about 3 million barrels a day comes from Canada, 1 million comes from Venezuela, but 3 million barrels a day comes actually out of Africa. And that has been in the last decade quite a good story for many of the countries, not only for Nigeria, but also for the other countries. And this should represent with it also a good opportunities for Africa to be able to continue the G GDP growth, continue the investment on the infrastructure. But of course, we need to think about the skills and the talents because that's a big risk which we are taking as, as a community or as, a, as an industry. If you take Africa as a continent, uh, Samir, give us an idea of how much we export, how much we input, uh, import rather, the supply-demand balance across all the energy sources, but notably oil and gas. Yeah, as I just mentioned before, because there is now an, uh, an oversupply almost on the oil side, uh, that means that OPEC has been going there and regulating the outputs in order to be able to keep a steady price. The thing is that what we are facing today, if you are in, in, in explorations, for instance, in the U.S., and you are getting for, you're going for tight oil or associated oil in, in, in together with, with gas, you will be spending around 10 to 40 dollars actually per, per barrel. But if you are in the old sands activities, as a mining itself or an upgrade, you will be spending about 100 dollars uh, per barrel. 
And as we see now the supply is increasing and the demand is decreasing, that's where we see the supply and demand is taking different shape than what it used to be in the past. And therefore, we believe that there will be a quite a good pressure on the oil price. But what we see, however, is obviously Sorry. No, carry on. What we see, however, is that the gas is going to be, in the next couple of decades, that's going to be the fuel uh, uh, which everybody is looking for. There is a, a, a vast abandoned reserves of gas in the different places in the world with the technology which we have today, whether it is with horizontal uh, drilling, whether it is actually through fracking process, uh, we will be able to extract much more gas than what we have been having in the past. And the U.S. today is representing the biggest opportunity. Now, if you go and you see the prices in the, in the U.S., we are speaking about 3.5 million uh, $3.5 dollars per million BTU, while on Tokyo Bay you will be paying maybe $17, $18. Dollars. So there is an enormous arbitrage between the U.S. prices and, uh, and the, U and, and the uh, uh, Tokyo prices, and that's going to be harmonized in the, in the near future. So as gas is going to be more and more uh, used, whether it is in power generation or used in an industrial application, that would represent with it a quite a, a good opportunity for the industry to grow.